kids. Again, number theory, not my strongest suit, but these problems look scarier than they really are. It just takes a couple counterexamples to make some of these ridiculous. So I just took a counterexample here. I said let A be 18 and B be 12. And so they're positive integers such that A is greater than B. And uh, yeah. And so I can write 18 as 12 times, in this case, 1 uh, plus 6. So 12 goes into 18 once with the remainder of 6. So I've written it as, with our uh, kind of division rule there, as you can write any number, something goes in with the remainder, whatever. So, excellent. So comparing this to our a equals nb with the remainder of r, then, oops, I wrote it backwards. This is, this was the b and this was the n. b was 12. 12 goes in there once. Yay. Anyway, so now they're saying that the greatest common divisor of a and b is equal to one of these. So the greatest common divisor of 18 and 12 is 6. And so here, the greatest common divisor of 18, and in this case, the n was 1, right? So the greatest common divisor of 18 and 1 is 1. The greatest common divisor of 1 and the remainder happen to be 6 is 1. And the greatest common divisor of 1 and... 12 is 1. So that n doesn't matter at all. The n is just how many times b goes into 18. It doesn't have to do anything special. So all of these can be tossed out just by this one example. And we can show that this one is true. Uh, GCD of b and r, uh, b is 12 and r is 6. And the greatest common divisor of 12 and 6 is 6. Oh, sweet. It worked. So we didn't really prove that it worked. I'll do another video later to, to prove it. But yeah, don't be scared of it. Just try some and make sure you can eliminate all of them because sometimes it'll work for some and not for others when you're just doing examples. So you can prove false with counterexamples, but you can't prove true with examples. So just make sure you do enough to, to eliminate and you'll be just fine.